My name is Meg Hager. I am a laboratory genetic counselor for Natera's Renocyte Test, and I will be discussing negative genetic test results in a three-part series. This is part one. Many of us are probably familiar with this scenario. Imagine that you have a patient in front of you with a personal and possibly a family history of kidney disease that is suggestive of a genetic disorder. So you order genetic testing, it's sent out to the laboratory, and a few weeks later, results come back. However, when you open those results, you see that the patient has a negative or inconclusive test result. And so at this point, you may have a few different questions going through your head, such as, why are they negative? What do I do next? And what do I tell my patient? I am hoping to address these questions in this video series. And in this particular video, I will be focusing on the first point, which is examining why a patient may receive negative genetic test results. Broadly speaking, some reasons we can consider for negative genetic test results would include um, the patient's disease is unrelated to a genetic cause. It could be related to multifactorial inheritance. Um, perhaps the patient did not inherit a familial disorder, or there could be technical limitations with the test. Depending on the age of diagnosis or the particular clinical presentation, an individual may be more or less likely to have a monogenic cause identified in testing. However, we know that even when someone has a personal and family history that is suggestive of a genetic cause, they may still receive negative genetic test results. In some cases, this might point to um, a non-genetic cause of their kidney disease, such as diabetic nephropathy or a prior infection. Another thing to consider may be multifactorial inheritance. What we mean by this is that a person's kidney disease or their risk to develop kidney disease could be the result of multiple environmental and genetic factors. To give a few examples of this, on the environmental side, we could consider things like smoking or diet. So what a person is eating or what they're exposed to in their environment. On the genetic side of things, we could consider things like biological sex or family history. Um, we know that families often share genes, and so when it comes to multifactorial risk, there could be several genes that have small effect sizes that are really creating this background polygenic risk score. However, at this time, we do not have a test that is designed to report that out. Um, and some examples of multifactorial traits that we could think of that may impact kidney disease risk could be hypertension, diabetes, and lupus. Sometimes you might see a patient with both a personal and family history of kidney disease that is suggestive of a genetic disorder. If your patient has a negative genetic test result, it doesn't necessarily rule out a genetic cause for kidney disease in their relatives. So in that case, it is possible to consider that what your patient has is unrelated to the family history and that they possibly did not inherit a familial disorder. However, it should be noted that it's only possible to confirm that your patient does not have a familial disorder if a genetic mutation has been previously identified in the family or is identified in the future. So ideally, another affected relative would have genetic testing, so that way results could be compared to ensure that your patient has a true negative result. Oftentimes, the targeted gene panel may be ordered for a patient with kidney disease. Some of these panels could be focused onto a particular disorder, such as polycystic kidney disease, while other panels may be a bit broader and focus on multiple types of kidney disease. Regardless, in many cases, we can say that the genetic testing is considered to be comprehensive for a particular disorder, but it may not be exhaustive. And so by that, I mean a lesser known gene um, or a gene that only has limited evidence associating it with a particular disorder may not have been included on the original panel. Keep in mind that not all labs offer the same genes on their panels. And so it may be important to go back and take a look at what was ordered to ensure that the genes of interest um, that you had in mind were included in your patient's original report. And then another limitation to consider may be that um, there's a small chance that current sequencing technology may not be able to pick up certain mutation types. We do know of a few limitations um, such as Identifying those cytosine insertions in the MUC1 VNTR region um, is pretty tricky. And so you should reach out to 
the labs if you are hoping to get information about certain variants such as that one, just to see are they able to detect it or would you need to go somewhere else for that. And the last thing that I'll say regarding technical limitations is that you should be able to discuss those with the ordering laboratory. Um, so oftentimes that information is available either on the report itself or through the website, but the lab should be a good resource for you if you are worried about any limitations. And that concludes part one of the video series on discussing negative genetic test results. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for part two.